Welcome to the course Elementary Electrochemistry. This course is basically designed for students studying uh, BSc with uh, chemistry as one of the subjects. Electrochemistry is uh, a subject taught mostly in first and second year of BSc. So, this course is suitable for first and second year of uh, BSc students uh, who are studying chemistry as I already indicated. I am Dr. Rangsuman Rai Choudhury, Assistant Professor uh, in the Department of Chemical Sciences at ISAR Mohali and I have been teaching this course in this institute for last uh, few years. So, this course as uh, you all know that will have uh, 8 weeks total and this uh, course will have about uh, 20 hours of total lecture which will include uh, theory and experiments involving electrochemistry. So, here on your screen you can see the basic outline of this course. The in the first week we will have a brief introduction to electrochemistry, some basic aspects of electrochemical cells and how the uh, electrolysis is conducted and based on that the first week we'll, we will try to cover conduct conduction of electricity in solution, electrolysis, Faraday's laws of electrolysis, applications of Faraday's laws of electrolysis etc. And we will talk about cathodic and anodic reaction, construction of cell, we will try to solve some mathematical problems. And we will also discuss about Arrhenius theory of electrolytic dissociation, concept of units in electrochemistry strong and weak electrolyte etc. In the next week we will start talking about electrochemical cells where we will discuss the application of EMF measurement using polarimeter. We will discuss about western cell, Daniel cell etc. And we will try to derive equations related to EMF and free energy change of uh, a given reaction and we will highlight some of the mathematical problems as well. Then we will discuss about Nernst equation, e EMF with uh, equilibrium constant, the relationship, types of single electrodes, how to determine their uh, standard electrode potential etc. their applications and some mathematical problems. In the third week we will talk about types of electrodes, single electrodes, different types of redox reactions and their use in practical uh, life. We will talk about liquid junction potential concentration cells and learn uh, some aspects about their applications. And then we will discuss about the theoretical aspects of various potentiometric titration and related problems. In the fourth week as I already indicated this course will have a component of experiment. So, the fourth week will have demonstration experiments of EMF measurement. So, in that we will conduct some potentiometric titrations. There will be labs, laboratory uh, sessions which we, uh, will be videographed and uh, shown to you and we will then talk about the calculation, graph plotting etc. in the fourth week. In the following week after four weeks, fifth week we will talk about the solubility product. So, we will move to the ionic equilibria part. So, we will talk about solubility product, activity product, solubility product determination from EMF measurement dissociation constant of weak electrolyte all these along with buffer solutions weak acid weak base and strong acid um, buffer solutions of weak acid and weak base weak acid and strong base and strong acid and weak base etc and the related uh, problems in the week 6 we will move to electrolytic solutions where we will talk about the conduction of electricity through uh, an electrolytic solution. We will discuss about migration of ions, the transport number, Hittorff's rule and determination of transport number using different uh, methods. We will talk about the conductance in solution, specific conductance, equivalent conductance, their definitions and unit 
and determination of conductance, equivalent conductance at infinite dilution and we will also discuss some of the related uh, problems. In the seventh week, we will talk about Kohler-Rosset's law of uh, ionic mobility, its applications, weak electrolytes, degree of dissociation, hydration of ions and related problems. And we will also start discussing about the use of conductance measurement in uh, practical problems. So, in the last week, the eighth week, we will talk about the application of conductance measurement. We will demonstrate again some of the experiments where the conductance measurement uh, will be used to determine some of the uh, physical parameters. So, those experiments will uh, again be demonstrated through a laboratory pract uh, practical method and we will also teach or discuss about how those uh, experiments can be conducted and the corresponding calculation will be done. So, this course will have 8 weeks of uh, total content and each week as you are aware will have uh, 8 assignments worth about uh, 15 to 20 marks which will be mostly based on multiple choice questions and at the end of the semester there will be a written exam. Remember it will be a written exam not a multiple choice based uh, exam. It will be a written exam hard copy you will have to appear in the exam at some venue and uh, answer the questions in uh, pen and paper mode classical mode of writing exams and we will get those uh, uh, copies graded at Aisar Mohali. In this course, uh, there will be a tutor from my laboratory. Uh, at the, uh, so, that tutor will interact with you during this course through the portal provided uh, by NPTEL. So, you are free to ask questions in that portal and it will be the tutor and myself who will be looking at the portal on a regular basis and we will try to answer your queries uh, in the portal. And as far as I am told that there will be a few live sessions as well uh, when I will be present or my tutor will be present to answer your queries or uh, discuss some mathematical problems. So, this is the course outline that I wanted uh, you to first know. Here are some uh, textbooks that I have prescribed here you can see at the bottom of the screen some of the standard uh, test textbooks that uh, you should uh, buy or uh, try to get from some library and follow for this uh, course. When you have studied uh, in your uh, class 2, you might have little bit studied about the uh, electrochemistry in the sense that when you have a battery. Normally when we see a battery in our house, it looks like this, isn't it? The upper end is the positive terminal and the lower end is the negative terminal. So, when we write a battery in a given electrochemical circuit, we write the positive end as a longer line and the negative end as a shorter line and indicate like this. So, whenever you see a, an electrical circuit, a DC circuit, this means this is plus and this is minus end of a battery. What happens if you connect this battery through a circuit and connected to a bulb with a switch S. When you close this switch, the <coughs> current flows as a result the bulb blows. So, what is happening is that there is some chemical energies which is stored inside this battery. 
is now being uh, used up and that chemical reaction which is happening at these two electrodes, the positive electrode is the anode and the negative electrode the cathode, the negative uh, point. So, the current flows in this direction while the electron flows in the other direction, right? And the bulb glows. Similarly, if you have a battery and you take a solution of common salt in water, what will happen? You connect these two electrodes there. So I have already used a term called electrode, the tip at which you are dipping and making the electrical con connectivity with water is the electrode. So this is your positive and this is your negative end. So in this case what happens? Here this a solution of uh, uh, sodium chloride in water or just a tap water which will be conducting electricity. This will break water into H plus and OH minus ions. What will happen? The H plus ions will move towards the negative electrode. The cation <coughs> will move to this negative electrode towards the cathode, take up the electron and form the hydrogen atom and two such hydrogen atoms will join to form the hydrogen gas. So you will start seeing bubbles of hydrogen gas coming out of it. Right? Similarly, the OH minus ions will go here and release its electrons. and become OH radical. Four such OH radicals will combine to give you 2H2O plus O2 which will come out. As a result you will see the oxygen gas is coming out and hydrogen gas is so this is your very well known electrochemistry experiment that you might have done in your childhood using a battery and uh, somewhere. And what you see is that these chemical reactions are simultaneously happening in this solution and it is breaking hydro water into hydrogen and oxygen. So if one can trap this hydrogen and collect in a container. So suppose you put a very tiny glass uh, bottle filled with water and then in, insert the electrode in that uh, bottle which is filled with water. So suppose I am drawing that bottle which is filled with water and then you have inserted the electrode here and you have water at this level. What will happen is hydrogen gas will come up and it will fill in this region and push the water level down. So one can collect the evolved hydrogen at this point and one can uh, see if you bring a burning matchstick close to this uh, bottle after taking it out, this hydrogen will suddenly burst and catch fire and get ignited.
if you are trying to do this experiment at home, be very careful because hydrogen is uh, highly susceptible to fire and one should do it under controlled uh, condition only. So these aspects you probably have studied in your uh, uh, 10 plus 2. So we will uh, discuss about uh, these reactions in uh, detail in the next uh, class. So this is one thing that one has to uh, understand what is happening and you see this current is that is flowing is actually consuming the electrical energy stored in this battery and that electrical energy is stored because we have a particular chemical reaction happening inside that battery to release that electrical energy and you are able to do this uh, electrolysis. See today's date we all use uh, different electronic devices and those electronic devices have batteries starting from your mobile phone to a wristwatch to a laptop uh, or a computer everywhere you get to see different kinds of batteries and what are those batteries? Batteries are the storage of electricity and when we try to take out that stored electricity a certain chemical reaction happens inside the battery which releases uh, the energy as electrical energy. So chemical energy gets converted to electrical energy and when the battery is drained the entire chemical energy is consumed and it cannot uh, run the, the device for your mobile phone or the laptop computer or uh, <coughs> some other device. There is a way to do a charging, right? Every day you put your mobile phone for charging and that Charging means you are regenerating the chemical energy inside the battery. So the reaction that is happening inside the battery can be a reversible reaction. Some of the batteries you may encounter are not reversible process. So once the battery is drained, you cannot recharge those batteries. So there are two types of batteries. One are rechargeable batteries and others are not rechargeable batteries. So in non-rechargeable batteries, the chemical reaction inside is irreversible whereas in the rechargeable batteries, the chemical reaction that is happening inside the battery is a reversible process. One can do a large number of uh, cycles of charging and discharging uh, using those batteries and on today's date, this is a big industry to uh, develop small but more cyclable batteries and small but more powerful batteries which can store more energy so that one can uh, operate a, a car using a battery. So that is where uh, the application of electrochemistry comes in very handy. Starting with some basic knowledge, one can develop a career in electrochemistry and the battery uh, world which is a, always, a world, always a growing field of research because as you know the <laughs> natural resources of energy, the petroleum and coal are continuously reducing and we are now slowly moving towards an era when everything will be operated using a battery but then the battery has to be charged using a source of energy. So people are working on lots of different types of solar cells so that you can utilize uh, solar energy or uh, wind mills, wind energy to convert it into the <coughs> chemical energy stored in a battery and then eventually that chemical energy is used to operate different uh, devices even a motorbike or a car. So in the uh, next class we will start talking about various laws of electrolysis, the Faraday's laws of electrolysis, how the release of these ions are related to their corresponding uh, molecular weight and the amount of 
electricity transport during their uh, discharge process that is H plus ion getting uh, discharged to hydrogen atom, OH minus ion getting discharged to hydroxyl radical. So governing these aspects, there are a few laws proposed by uh, Faraday several hundred years ago. So those the law, Faraday's laws of electrolysis will be discussed in the first class and from there we will continue uh, to talk about uh, aspects of electrochemistry in this course. So I would uh, like to stop here in the, uh, as a first lecture and we will continue from here in the next class. Thank you.